Hello, this is Chara. We are going to be doing the high tiers for Splatoon 2 patch 5.5. This will be an all modes tier list. I have covered every single one of these weapons, the subs and specials in previous parts. So if you want to check that out, there will be a playlist in the description. With that all being said, let's get into the high and upper tier for Splatoon 2. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is a correction on my last part, which is I put Rapid Pro in mid-tier, and I don't know what I was on when I did that. I don't like this weapon, and I will talk about it real quick, but it should be here at the top of upper tier. Now, this weapon has missed, which is not great for it. I still stand by that. I still don't think Rain is amazing with it. I think it's okay, but the main thing is this kit works best for the weapon in Rainmaker and Zones, and the main weapon sucks in Rainmaker, so you don't really want to play it there anyway. It's just a very mediocre kit on a pretty solid overall main weapon. So, yeah, it should be more up here. It is still a Rapid Pro, and Rapid Pros are pretty nice right now, but I still don't think it's amazing. I was just wrong to put it in mid-tier. So, A tier, we're going to start with the Sploosh 7, and we're going to see this a lot with quite a few weapons, which is Sploosh 7 is a top 5 Rainmaker weapon. It dominates in that mode, and it's only decent on the others. In fact, A-. So, for weapons that are typically a top tier in just one mode, like one of the best in one mode, they'll be up at least in high tier. Anything that's one of the best in a mode isn't going to be any lower than high tier, if that makes sense. So, Sploosh is okay in other modes, but its main thing is just Rainmaker. It has the highest DPS for the Rainmaker shield, it has a quick kill time, it has a bomb, it has a special with high damage per second of the Rainmaker shield. It's got everything. So the Sploosh is really good in that mode. Outside of that, it has range problems, its kit can have a hard time getting in, so if it's not Rainmaker, it can struggle a lot. It's okay on short range maps, and Hammer is pretty nice at fighting Kenza 52, and in general Booyah it's pretty good against. But Hammer is also very inconsistent, and so a lot of Hammer weapons are higher up in this tier list than they would be normally because they're pretty good at countering 52 and countering Bubble Blower, and those two things are very important. But the special is not consistent enough, and none of the main weapons are great enough to be super high, which is why I'm gonna, spoiler alert, we're talking about almost all the Hammer weapons today. Alright, Junior. I am of the opinion that I don't think Junior is very great. It works. You can win with it. If you run the right comp, it's fine. But realistically, NZAP is just the better support. Zap has better painting range. It can actually fight people. And it has the better bomb in terms of poking because suction damage is super great, especially against wall. It just has a hard time fighting. If you're going against a quad shooter comp, the Junior isn't going to be able to fight pretty much anything in it. It can get more armors than other specials, but... If you're a good zap player and you're good at managing when you use armor, because armor is important to use at the right time, I don't think it's a huge problem. Again, Junior can work better for some comps than zap. It's not bad. You can win with it. But in an ideal world, you should just be running zap or things that work well with zap. It's not really that hard to run a zap comp over a Junior comp. Ah, uh, K-Junior's in B. K-Junior is weird because the main weapon, like I said before, kind of sucks. It has low painting range, stuff like that. Torpedo kind of works for it, but the main thing is this weapon has bubble combo, and because of Torpedo, you can actually bubble combo a single bubble by locking onto an opponent. You can still do the standard bomb to bubble bomb, so it's very, very weird in that. But the thing is, Junior is basically... It becomes near useless when it doesn't have its special to... Oh my god, we have to keep tabs on this thing 24-7. Be careful when it does. Like, this weapon is simultaneously one of the worst and one of the best weapons in the game, depending on if it has its special. <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, if it was less points for special, I would put it higher, because I think the special is just so important to it. And it is 200p on a low painting range weapon, so... Yeah, it's B. It's really hard to tell. It kind of depends what KG your players can do, but it's not the only bubble combo weapon, so... Yeah. Uh, Aerospray, A-. This is another super good niche in one mode, of uh, being Rainmaker. Now, I do not think it is as good as Sploosh 7. It is better for some comps. Something I talked about in my Riptide Tournament analysis video with Starburst. But overall, I would say Sploosh 7 is better for the Rainmaker niche than Silver Arrow is. Silver Arrow has the bomb, it has less damage per second, but still solid DPS. And it has Curling Launcher with 160p, so you can run Double Suction Bomb, which is the better bomb. Curling, Swap Shield, Curling, Salt Forever. So why is it the same tier as Sploosh 7 if I just said it's slightly worse? Because Silver Arrow Spray also has niches on some zones maps like Skipper or Humpback 
and a few others because Carling Rush can paint really well. So Sploosh 7 is a slightly better Rainmaker niche, but Silver Arrow Spray has some niches on a few zones maps, therefore I think they're about even. Uh, B minus Arrow Spray PG. I don't have too much to say. This is Booyah Spam, but K52 is better in most situations. You could still run this Arrow Spray, but it's just not as good now that K52 exists. Like, when this thing was the only Booyah Spam weapon you saw, like, way back before K52 got a bunch of buffs, it was good. Like, it was a bit higher. But now that K52 exists, and that has way better painting range than Arrow Spray, and it can paint with its wall to protect itself, you're just gonna more often than not want this, unless if it's, like, Humpback Zone, so not the best spot for it. Uh, T-Tech in B. Actually, T-Tech down here. There's no real reason to use a T-Tech. It's not bad at anything. Like, this is probably the most average weapon in the entire game. It has no, like, major flaws. Like, its damage now works, so it doesn't have problems with bomb combo. Now that it's 36. It has a solid kill time, solid paint, solid bomb, Inkjet's okay. It would be better if it was a more aggressive meta, because Inkjet kind of struggles right now. But it's 200p. The realistic truth about T-Tech is there's no real reason you want to run a T-Tech. It's fine at everything. Like, there's nothing it's bad at running into. But there's just better options. And we'll get to those later, especially for Inkjet's. So it's fine. I think the weapon could benefit from being 190p. And it could also benefit from a meta where Inkjet is not countered by most of the things you run with K52, but that's unfortunately where we are right now. K-Pro in A tier. I think K-Pro is a little bit underrated and overrated, depending on who you ask. If you ask people in lower ranks, they will still think K-Pro is really broken, like it was when it had 180 Booyah, and Booyah was better, and it required less MPU, and blah 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 blah. And if you ask people at a certain point now, they'll be like, man, the weapon can't paint, other MPU weapons are better, blah blah blah. I stand in the middle of it. I think there just aren't that many good K-Pro players. Like, Nolan is the only Western player actually using it. I don't think K-Pro's paint is that bad. It is still a solid kit. It is still a solid kill time. I think K-Pro is in a perfectly okay spot. I think it would be good if it had a cheaper Booyah because the weapon does not paint well. And the weapon is 210p Booyah, so I wish it was uh, 200 or maybe even 190. But it's still fine. Like, its paint is not that bad. It still has plenty of strengths. It's kind of just in this weird middle spot. I think K-52 is the way better Booyah weapon, but I think if you want to run a comp around K-Pro, like with Junior, you can do it. You can play a comp around K-Pro and you can win. It'll be better to run a K-52 comp, just like it will be better to run a Zap than a Junior comp, but I think it'll absolutely work fine. So you can definitely do it there. Okay, I'm going to put this a bit lower than most people in B. 96 would normally be nicer for some long-range maps, but honestly, normal shooters are so fast, and 96 RNG is so terrible. Things like Splash can just run circles around it. It has solid painting range, but it doesn't have a bomb. Sprinkler is not the worst thing for it, but it's not good either. It's just kind of... If it was a little bit better, it could be great for long-range armor maps. Like stuff like Albacore, Pit, etc. It could be good for those stages if it was just a little bit better. If it had like a bit less RNG or a bit more shot velocity or a different sub weapon or something like that, I think 96 could have a decent niche and probably be up where Junior is. But as of right now, even on those long range stages, I think you're better off using Zap or even sometimes using stuff like Armor Rapid or HD. I don't really think there's anywhere you absolutely want a 96. The only one we really see in top level is Ant and Ant is just very good with the weapon and makes it look way better than it actually is because he's a very good player who's played 96 for a long time. I mean, again, you can still do stuff with it. Like, upper tiers are still perfectly capable tournament-winning weapons. This is what Splatoon 2 is. A ton of weapons can win right now with a decent chance if you have a player who pushes them. A 96 is solid. I just wish it was a little bit better. It's so close to having its own niche. It's so close. If they just give it a little bit more, I think the weapon will be in a good spot. But unfortunately, 96 has just kind of been ignored in some of these patches. Uh, Mine Rapid is overrated, and I hate the argument for it, because here's the truth. Rapid struggles when you don't have map control. So it's really important for Rapid to be able to farm a good special, preferably a cheap one, because it doesn't really paint that well, or to have a pokeable sub weapon. And this weapon has neither of those. It has mines, which do nothing when you don't have map control, and it's 200p for Bomb Rush. Second of all, Bomb Rush, why would you want this weapon? If you want a Splat Bomb Rush, use Sorella Umbrella. If you want a Suction Launcher, 
use Neo Splash. If you want a long range bomb rush weapon, use Fire Fin. There isn't a super good reason to use V Rapid. And people look at the kit and it's like, mines combo with Rapid well, bomb rush combos with Rapid well. It could maybe be good. And yeah, it's not terrible, but there's no real reason to use it. You know, I'll put it up here. It's not that bad. But realistically, if you don't have map control, you don't do a lot. So why would you play it over the other Rapids? Armor Rapid can farm an armor. K Rapid can at least poke with Torp. Like it has a damage combo, so you have to kind of respect it a little bit because you can kill in basically two hits. Again, perfectly capable of working, but in this case, not really. Also, no, the tiers are not ordered. I'm just putting it in, in like class range order as I rank them. Ah, oh, Rapid Deco. I love Rapid Deco. It could be so cool, but it's just not. It's just not working with Inkjet. The weapon's really, really solid. I mean, normal Rapid is okay, but it really needs a kit to compensate for stuff like short range shooters closing the gap, and we just don't have that here. Suction is fine, it's a pokeable bomb. The main thing is Inkjet is just really easy to ignore. I don't know, I kind of think this weapon has potential because the bomb can help with breaking wall in 52 and Suction is still a pokeable bomb. I think the Inkjet makes it a bit too linear, honestly. It's close to being better, it's one of those weapons that's very close to being at the top of high tier and maybe a good player can do something with it, but I don't think it's the right spot for it. K Rapid A tier. Here's the part where people who call me biased can shut up, because if I were biased, I would put this thing in top tier. But let's be honest, it's not top tier right now. Baller has only gotten worse and worse as time develops. Rapid can struggle at dealing with the quad shooter meta, even with torpedo combo. It is still really tricky to find kills on it. You basically need a comp that is built around the K Rapid. Like, you need stuff that can combo damage with it in order to use it. It's still a solid weapon. Like, this is still perfectly tournament-capable winning. Like I said, Rapid was bad as like, yeah, it's not top tier. Not the weapon is garbage. It's just okay. You need to run more things with it. In previous patches, Rapid actually countered the current meta. In this case, it really struggles. It's good against Squeezer. That's its main positive. But short range shooters don't have that hard a time dealing with it. It just has way better specials than Rapid has. But the main thing is fighting 52 is a pain. Because what the hell are you going to do about wall? You can't shoot over it if the 52 knows what they're doing, like they can space around it properly, and then you have what? No damage to the wall? Your sub does no damage to the wall? Then you can pop baller? Yeah, have fun with that. They'll just throw another wall. <laughs> like you just wall sit behind it, and then when the baller blows up, you throw another wall, the rapid can't kill you in time, and then boom. You now kill the rapid player. If this thing had a special, the main sub combination is great but it just doesn't have a special. That's the main thing holding it back right now. The main sub can still fight everything besides 52. It just doesn't have a special with it. VL3, yeah, this thing used to be broken in turf four and good when baller was good. They made it 200p now, so it's just good main weapon, but baller is garbage right now, and this thing's 220p. Again, we're not counting turf war, this weapon would be higher. L3D, this is your good inkjet niche weapon. It can paint for it really well. It's 200p, so it's the same as T-Tech, but with better paint, better painting range. It's really useful for burst bomb poking. It's an MPU weapon. It doesn't require too much. The L3 is 200, 220. Yeah, that's what I meant. My bad. But L3D, it's fine. Inkjet niche is not that useful right now. If it was a bit better, then it would be higher up. There are still a few maps you want inkjet on, on stuff like Schellendorf zones, but... Overall, it's a bit weaker. Inkjet is very nice in Tower and Rain still, but even then, even in Tower Rain, where Inkjet is really good, I still think you can run comps that can just wait it out. I really don't have that high opinion of Inkjet right now, and that affects a lot of the weapon placements I'm going to put up. Uh, VH3 can missile spam really well. It's 170p. It's a solid main weapon. It doesn't have a bomb. It has a useless sub. Uh, Carbodeco is still pretty threatening. It can still do a lot to the short range weapons. It really struggles at just dealing with missile spam. And by the time I upload this video, I'll have also uploaded the tournament set in which we played against Volti's team. And you can see good examples of missile spam can really shut down Carbon. Because you get to know where they are, you get to force them to move. I think missiles are the main thing that really hurts Carbon. Obviously the weapon doesn't have a special, but Carbon doesn't get that much anyway. You have to run very specific comps around it. I mean, it's fine. It has good niches. It can kill very well through armor with burst combo, but it's not great, honestly. If there was less special spam, especially less missile spam, I think it could be a lot higher. But it's really easy to just run V-Jet or 89 or K-Shot and have missile spam to deal with the carbon. And then if your teammates know what you're doing, the carbon is now 
drastically mitigated. Foil flings a A tier. Foil flings a is okay. You need a comp around it. It's basically long range paint with the decent capability to defend itself and a nice pokeable bomb. It benefits a lot from last ditch effort. The main thing here is just that V-Jet is the way better missile spam backline. Or not way better, but it's the better option. The main thing is Foil Flings are really doesn't have that much of a reason to be used over V-Jet. The only arguable thing is the suction spam, but because the weapon is ink hungry, that requires LDE being active. And then the main modes you would want suction spam, which is Tower and Rainmaker, the main weapon struggles the most. So like it's best in zones. And then zones the bomb doesn't matter as much for Flingza. It's still really useful. The main thing you have to argue about Foil Flingza is basically the suction compared to Mist. But honestly, V-Jet gets so much missile output, it can help its team so much that I still put it higher. Uh, Clash Neo, it can fight short-range shooters, it's good at breaking armor, it's pretty fast, it doesn't paint, it doesn't get a lot of special, it has a mediocre sub-weapon. Not much else to say, really, it's not as bad as people say it is, you just need to play it more like a Rapid than a Luna, and the weapon becomes a lot better. I believe in KL3 quite a bit because I think it can wall 52, it has a cheaper special, and it paints about the same if not slightly better. However, Hammer is still very inconsistent so I will put it here, and wall is not always the best thing for L3, it's still pretty solid though. Permabrush A tier, I think Permabrush is pretty underrated, however I don't think it's quite good enough to break into the top. There's a huge debate on if Permabrush and Inkbrush Nouveau is the better one. And right now, I am leaning towards Nuvo Brush just a little bit, because I think it is really useful to play behind a quad shooter comp. And Ink Brushes can do pretty well against shooters, but I don't think it's that insane for the Armor Brush. I think most of the time it's just hard to do comps, because it's not as reliable as the other armor support, so it's a lot easier to build things around end zap. And so Ink Brush Nuvo will be slightly better, I'll talk about that in top tiers. Octobrush is. Uh, both of these are pretty solid. These are really good in Rainmaker, arguably the best weapons in Rainmaker, actually. It's arguably they're a bit better than Sploosh. They're pretty good in Clam Blitz. And KL3 is Hammer and Suction, which is a really nice kit. The first one is Autobomb, which is okay, but 170 Inkjet is really cheap. The weapons have a bit of a weaker kill time and not the greatest paint, but neither of them are bad either. It's just another really tricky weapon to rank because it's hard to tell exactly how much it can do. I would say the K-Brush is a bit better. In fact, I'll put the K-Brush up here. K-Brush has a really good kit for this meta right now. Did I say KL3 and said K-Brush? Jeez, my bad. But anyway, I think the brushes are a bit underrated. You just have to learn how to space. They're not too bad. They're still not great, but this is an all-modes list. They are Kings and Rainmaker. They are solid in Clan Blitz. There's no way I can't put them this high. And they're fine in zones. The main thing is really tower control. Tower Control, yeah, you probably don't want to run one of these, but outside of that, I think it's pretty fine, honestly. It's not too bad, and we're fighting shooters, so it's not the worst thing for it in the world. 210 Baller. Enough said. A really good sub-main special combination. I think the V kit is a little bit better because of how nice Burst Bombs are with it. Rain with Object Shredder is nice, but you have to run Stealth on Try most of the time. I think it's good at poking armor weapons. I think it's fine at fighting. Just not enough to be top tier. It's still really good. Just the normal try kit is a little bit better against most comps, but try Nuvo is still very good. Uh, machine sensor, just nope. Sorry, sensor. Bomb Rush is okay with it, but sensor is not good. If K Machine and Neo Machine did a fusion dance, this thing would have an amazing top tier kit, but unfortunately, uh, every machine just kind of got screwed and got half a kit, and it sucks, but that's where it is right now. V Blob is a minus. Blob is really good. Deco is the main kit we want to use. I want to save this for the top tiers because I have a lot to say about Blob. It will take a long time, so just I will get back to Blob and why it's a top tier, but V Blob having Wall Rain is not as good as the Bomb Rush one and the cheaper Bomb Rush might add. At least I believe it's cheaper. I think it's 180 and V Blob is 190. So maybe it's the other way around, but either then, Such and Rush is so nice for it, especially in all mode setting. But again, We'll get to that later when we talk about top tiers. All right, I'm putting the Kabooms in A-, and this is because this is an all-modes tier list. To be perfectly clear, if it was a zones-only tier list, Expos would be top tier. They are great in that mode. They have good pain, good damage, etc. Because we are talking about all-modes, and these things are not great in Tower and Rainmaker. They are not as horrible as people think they are, which is why this weapon is an A-, but... 
they still are not great in it. These also don't have great kits, and kits would be the main thing that would allow them to be able to be used in Tower and Rainmaker rather than just zones and sometimes Clan Blitz. So, unfortunately, Expo is a great main weapon, especially for zones, that does not have actual kits. It cannot do damage to bubbles, sprinkler is meh, point sensor sucks, heavy baller sucks. Classic Squiffer, I think it's a lot like Perma Brush, where the armor can be a bit awkward, but it's still 170 armor. Squiffer charges full speed in the air. It is great at putting a lot of pressure, because when you charge full speed in the air, you can do some nice jump shots that allows you to put a lot of pressure under ledges. Very quick kill time. Definitely still struggles fighting with all the armor missile going on like normal chargers since it doesn't have as much range. I don't know why you would play the charger. It is still a charger, so it's still in B tier, but if you really want Ray, just play C-Jet. It's way cheaper. There's no reason to use the Ray charger outside of personal preference. Bamboo 3. Alright, Bamboo players. I know some of you like this weapon. Here's why it's there, even though it has a good sub, a good special, good main weapon. Because you cannot run LDE, Special Power, Object Shredder, Bubble Blower, and a main power build on the same time. And both MPU and non-MPU Bamboo are here. To be clear, I still think Mach 3 is capable of winning. Bamboo without MPU is still solid, and the bubble combos and stuff it could do is great. The problem is, you kind of want MPU Bamboo a little bit more, and if you're going to run MPU Bamboo, these two kits are both better at it. So you might as well just play those if you're playing MPU Bamboo. Which means the people playing Mach 3 are the people using non-MPU Mach 3 and trying to push it. Which so far, doesn't really have much to back it up. Maybe it could do a little bit better? I could see this weapon breaking into high tier, but right now, this is where I'm putting it. Uh, Mach 2 up here, because Mist Burst Rush is a great kit for the weapon. It's good for rain, Burst Bombs combo really well with Bamboo, it's a pretty solid special. And Bamboo can still run MPU and be a Bamboo. It's 160 Burst Rush, it gets so much of the special. Mach 2 is pretty underrated. Mach 1 is really good, and we'll get to that in top tier. But Mach 2's kit's pretty good with it, the main weapon's pretty good, it mainly has a use in Rainmaker, but it also can be played on all modes a little bit. Mach 1 kit is a little bit better, but Mach 2 is still very good, and has its own reasons to be used. Kimmy! I took a while thinking about if I wanted to put Kimmy or Kale 3 higher for the hammer niche, and I'm gonna put Mini higher. However, like with Blob, I'm not going to talk about Mini too much until top tiers, because I have a lot I want to say about Mini Spotling. The kit is not as good as the KL3. I will say that the KL3 is a better kit, but I think Mini is the better main weapon, and I will have to get to it later. <sighs> I hate rating Spotlings, this shit is about to be sad. Remix is kind of like Aerospray. It's good for Booyah spam, and it's solid. It's a little bit better than Arrow because it has range, and that gives it some use. Heavy, like I stated in my low to mid to bottom tiers video, is just kind of mediocre as a main weapon, though. And it doesn't have a sub. It's fine at Booyah Spam, I guess, and it's nice for something like Humpback and Tower Control, but that's about it. Yeah, I thought Hydra might have a time in the sun. I honestly did. For a while, it seemed to be pretty cool. But Missile Spam V-Jet is now a thing, and Missile Spam in general is a thing. You can just missile the Hydra. Like, man, this is a weapon that, if missiles didn't exist, if it was a little bit faster at dealing with it, it could potentially be higher. It's a solid kit, but right now it just struggles so much at missile spam and nothing else has to fight it. I'll give it B tier, you know what? It could still at least shred things, but if you play against a Hydra and you're a team that knows what you're doing, you just play around missile spam, and you'll deal with it. It sucks, but that's where it is right now. Just please a little bit faster Hydra in Splatoon 3. Just give it a bit more strafe speed. It will work wonders for the thing. I think Ballpoint Nouveau has potential. I think it is good against V-Jet. I think it still really struggles at shredding things. The weapon has potential. If it was a bit cheaper Storm or a little bit better of a main weapon, I think it could make it to top tier. I still think Hydra players could potentially win with it. But right now, it just doesn't have any results or anyone playing it, so I can't really put it in top tier. It's just a victim of over-nerfing. A lot of weapons here are, but Ballpoint is probably the prime example of being over-nerfed. And unfortunately, that means I think it's at the very top of high tier, still has some good potential, still a jack-of-all-trades with a solid kit. Great for the beacon niche, has some potential with some off-meta comps, but not quite there yet. v Not. this is the zones one you would run it in, but the gold Nautilus is better in general. I will be honest, I really debated putting Gold Nautilus in high tier because of the current meta. However, it will be in top tier, and I will talk about Nautilus more in the top tiers because that's the main kit. But Nod has definitely fallen off a bit, and I will talk about it. 
Luga Decos are your weird K52. Yes, it is one in area cup, but this is an all modes tier list, so it can't be that high. And even then, that was by a very good player who mostly plays that weapon. Luga Deco is okay at walling things out. It can kind of play around its kit. It has a very similar K52 playstyle, but without the paint and the amazing special, it's just not as great. Again, still fully capable of doing things, but not as fantastic as it should be. Uh, Vibrella. Its kit is hard outclassed by Sorella, except for arguably TC, where you can run Object Shredder Rain. It is 190p. The sub doesn't seem to matter that much, but it does help sometimes to have Auto Bomb. And Bomb Rush is actually so much better for the weapon. Sorella is a thing I will have to talk about more in top tiers, and I know I've said this for a few weapons, but Sorella Brella is the main kit. And Brella is very interesting in this meta, so I have a lot I want to say about it. But for now, the regular kit is A- minus because... It is hard outclassed by Sorella, still perfectly capable of working, but doesn't really have any super defined niche you want to put it in. I think Sorella tends pretty underrated. This is all mode, so it's not as high as it could be, but it has all the curling bomb niches. It's a bit worse in Rain, but honestly, Tent is not horrible in Rainmaker. I know against very good Rainmaker comms, Tent can struggle, but it's not as bad as people say it is. So I'll put it in... You know what? I'll do A-. minus. Just because Tower and Rainmaker can be a bit of a struggle. It's great in clams. It's great in zones. The main weapon can struggle fighting K52, and that's the main thing that hurts it. Bomb spam can hurt it. Bomb rush from Splash. But it's still pretty solid. It's still pretty solid. v I think, is about the same tier. Bubbles are okay with it. It's still a pretty solid. Pretty much the same thing I said about Sorella Brella with the Curling Rush niche, except it has a better sub and a... Okay, special for it. It can still play around bubbles pretty well, even though it can't dedicate as much to special power up, since it usually tries to run QR builds because it can die randomly to bombs, hammer, booyah, bubble combo, etc. It's okay. Camo is the better kit, and I will talk about it later. <sighs> and lastly, we have Cunder. I believe in Cunder, so I will biasly put it in A tier. Realistically, it should probably be an A minus. Actually, you know what? Uh, all the bias in the world is going to be an A minus. This thing just can't fight short-range shooters. The bombs are too much. The damage is too much. It does too little damage. Its shield doesn't have enough uses. That's the main thing you want to use it is torpedo and shield. And torpedo is against quad shooters, so it's not as good. And the shield gets shredded too much. If this weapon had a bit better ink efficiency so it could get more armors and use uh, its main weapon and sub better for fighting, if it had a little bit more durability on the shield, either of those two buffs would be great. It would be a good bit better and potentially in top tier, but Condor is just a little bit too weak. We saw it get 10 most points for specials, so maybe if we get a 5.6, Nintendo will care enough to save Condor, but who knows. I think it's okay, though. It's not super horrible. It's just really hard compared to other supports. You have to play so well against good meta comps. If you're running people who don't play meta, it's a bit better, so I guess that's a thing. And with that being all said, this list right here... These are your top tiers we'll be covering in the final part of this episode. But with that all being said, that will be the upper and high tiers, the weapons with potential in Splatoon 2. We'll see what happens to them. This is the tier of things that are most likely to change. But with that all being said, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all later.